Hey everyone, Nick Dearbird is here teaching you financial modeling. So today we're going to be talking about how we can add Monte Carlo simulation to an existing Excel model. This is part of our lecture series on Monte Carlo simulation. So this video is going to wrap up the lecture series. We already uh, talked about what Monte Carlo simulation is, why we would want to do it, look at an example of running it on a new Python model, uh, did a more formal introduction of Monte Carlo and all the parts of it and the analysis of it, uh, and then went and applied it to an existing Python model. So all that's left is to apply it to an existing Excel model. So if you're thinking about just using pure Excel for Monte Carlo simulations, it is definitely a challenge. Um, there are add-ins which are able to do this for you, but I don't know of any um, good, really flexible, free add-ins for this. Most of the good ones, you're going to have to pay a substantial premium to get that add-on. Um, and without the add-on, then with only Excel, pretty much you're going to be going to VBA to complete this. There are ways to hack it with uh, data tables, but it can get quite complicated to do that. Um, especially if you only have one or two inputs varying at a given time. That's not too bad with a data table. Um, but as soon as you want to change more than two, then it starts to get uh, to be quite a, a hacky kind of approach to make that happen with some kind of lookup in another table uh, in order to make that happen. And yeah, you might be able to hack it some way or uh, you're going to using VBA or Python. So, you know, generally I would recommend uh, just to use Python to be able to run your Monte Carlo simulation in Excel. So, uh, you know, we've already learned how to combine Excel and Python in the prior lecture series. And so we can leverage that knowledge to take our Excel model and use Python to run Monte Carlo simulations on it. Um, and the process that we're going to follow there is extremely similar to the one that we just carried out in Python. All we're doing is changing the inputs, running the model, and storing the output each time. Um, the difference here is just that instead of running Python code to um, change the inputs and uh, run the model, we're going to use Excel Wings to take the inputs from Python put them into Excel, and then get the result that we want from Excel back into Python. Um, so same exact kind of flow, but just having the Excel model hooked up instead of the Python core model. And then, so at the end of that process, you'll have all your simulation results in Python. And it's up to you at that point whether you want to just go ahead and analyze them in Python, and then you'll do the exact same kind of analysis that we showed uh, in adding uh, Monte Carlo simulation to an existing Python model. Or you can take all those simulation results and output them back into Excel and then do an analysis on them in Excel. So let's look at an example of how we would actually go about this. So I've got the dynamic salary retirement model up here on the left and a fresh Jupyter notebook up here on the right. So, uh, you know, this model is already set up so that uh, everything flows through. We give it different inputs and it's going to change the output. So first thing we want to do is import Excel wings as XW and uh, we're going to need pandas as well. So just to add those inputs there. Um, and you can look on uh, the course site to see a fully built, built out example of this, uh, which has all the proper um, explanations and, and formatting of everything. But I'm going to go ahead and just um, get right to the code here. So we're going to now use Excel Wings to get a connection to the workbook. 
Um, so this is dynamic Valerie retirement model. Uh, I just realized that uh, these are not in the same folder. Um, so let me let me move that into the same folder. See that over here on my other screen here. Give me a moment for that. Okay, now they're in the same folder. Uh, so that's a potential pitfall as you try to do this. You want to make sure they're in the same folder, or otherwise you're going to have to put the full file path of the uh, Excel model. So this is uh, copy to uh, copy to um, file not found. So I must not have gotten that name right. Dynamic salary retirement model dash copy to. Oh, right. I need to put the XLSX. Okay. Now I have the connection to the book. And so now I can get the um, inputs and outputs sheet. Um, and ultimately, we're going to use two different sheets. So I'm going to call this IO sheet. Um, and this is going to be book.sheets inputs and outputs to reference our inputs and outputs worksheet here. Um, so now we're going to run a single simulation. Um, so um, all that we need to do to run a simulation in Excel is change the input. That's going to automatically trigger Excel to recalculate the model. And so then the output will change as well. So let's look at just varying the interest rate. So here um, in B10, we have the interest rate. So IO sheet dot range uh, B10 value. And let's just try it out by putting a value in there, 8%. Let's run that. And we see this has updated to 8% and the years for retirement has similarly updated. So then the other side of this is then just getting that out, the IO sheet. Uh, we want to get the output here. B18 is the output range. Uh, so B18 value. And we can see that gets us the year's retirement. So we can save that as year's retirement. Um, and that's basically it. Um, you know, we've got to add the random part to do the simulation, but just you know, running these two cells is how we can run the Excel model from Python. Um, and then we're going to show in this example analyzing the outputs in Excel. So we'll ultimately need to get the outputs back to Excel. So I'm going to go and create a new worksheet here. Um, call this simulations. Um, and then I'm going to create a reference to that sim sheet, book.sheets, simulations. Um, and now I can do the sim sheet dot range uh, a one dot value equals your retirement. And now we see that came into there. So now we have recorded the result of that simulation back into Excel. So that's just a single run of the model, not even really a, a simulation because this wasn't random. Um, but let's now go to uh, running multiple simulations. <clears throat> so we're going to need the random module as well. Um, and let's put a mean of the interest, 5%. Let's put a standard deviation of the interest, 3%. Um, and now we can do random dot normal variate um, to get a random interest rate drawn from a normal distribution. So then the interest rate, um, we can see we run it multiple times, we get different values of the interest rate. So then, um, we want to basically um, 
do this, but in a loop over the number of iterations. Um, so I'm going to add a uh, number of iterations as another uh, variable there. And then we're going to go through the range of the number of iterations. And um, we're going to get the interest rate. And then we're going to put that interest rate into the model. And then we're going to extract the years to retirement from the model. And that would be uh, running the simulations. So then the other thing is just to save the results. So all retirement years. Uh, all retirement years dot append years retirement. So now I run this and we can see we get 10 different uh, years to retirement. And if you look over at the Excel model while this happens, you can see that the interest rate is changing around. And it actually changes around more than you can even see because it's going really fast. But you do see it changing around as we run this. Um, so we want to bring these values back into Excel. Um, and if you recall, we probably want these in a column. That generally makes more sense in Excel. Um, if you recall, we had this trick where we wrap each item into its own list in order to get it to output vertically. Um, so we can do vertical retirement years, do list comprehension, uh, dot, just putting a list around um each of the retirement years so that we have something that uh, looks like that and now that um, we're able to write back into excel um, in a column format so i'm going to go to the same spot as before but i'm going to put the vertical retirement years and now you can see that each time i run this it's going to bring this into there. So I run these two together. We're going to get new simulation results coming in each time and back into Excel. So then it makes sense to wrap all this up in a function. Um, so uh, retirement simulations. It takes the number of iterations, the interest mean, and the interest standard deviation does all this and then does this as well. And we can have it also return the all retirement years just in case uh, we later wanted to do analysis in Python as well. Um, and then we can do uh, the retirement simulations for the results. Let's go up to a thousand iterations this time with a a 10% mean and a 5% standard deviation. Um, and then look at top 10 results. And we'll see that run for a while. We can um, Excel kind of froze up while it was running. Uh, but now we can see that we have a thousand different results here uh, from the thousand different simulations. And we also have those same um results in python as well so now we have our results in excel and we have them in python so you could go and do your analysis in either at this point um, but we've already seen how to do the analysis in python so i'm going to show doing the rest in excel so we have all these results here the first thing that we might want to do is a histogram to see the distribution of the results. So I just highlighted all of that. I'm going to go and insert chart. Um, and then I'm going to go to histogram and add the histogram. And we can see the uh, basic distribution here. Um, and Uh, we can change the number of bins here. 
uh, generally better to have more bins for these simulations because you've got so many different cases. So 100 is maybe too many bins because now it looks really sparse. Let me go with, let's try 25 on that. Um, which looks a little bit more reasonable. This would be um, probability distribution. of years to retirement. Okay, um, the next thing that we'll want to look at is the percentile table. So in order to do that, first you want to set up your uh, percentiles. So I'm just going to start with 5, 10% and then I'll be able to drag for the rest of the range. Um, this is going to be years to retirement. And then Excel has the percentile function, which is like the quantile um, in Pandas. And then we're going to grab all that data. And then the uh, percentile is going to be the one which is there to the left. And make sure that you fix the range on the data because you don't want that to move as you drag down. But we do want the percentile to move. So then we can complete that. And we can see that it looks right, um, that 5% you know, of the time we can retire in less than 20 years, and 10% of the time it takes at least 40 years. Um, and then the um, last thing that we can do here is get the probability of a certain outcome. Um, so for that, then... Um, we can recreate what we had done in Pandas by, um, let's just say our objective is retiring in 25 years. So objective 25, say objective years for retirement to be more clear. Um, and then we just do equals if. Uh, remember, we want to check did the simulation meet the condition? So, is the year's retirement um, less than the objective year's retirement? That means we met the objective. And make sure we fix that objective. Um, and if we met the objective, we get a one, otherwise, we get a zero. And then we can just complete that for all the results. We can see whenever it's less than 25. Um, well, really, it should be less than or equal to um, because 25 is also fine. Um, so yeah, anything which is less than or equal to 25 is now showing up as a 1, and anything greater is a 0. So then the uh, probability of uh, your retirement less than or equal to the objective is going to equal the average sorry it's average in excel average of this column that we just created so we get a 33 percent chance that we're going to be able to retire in 25 years or less so that's the um, basic Monte Carlo analysis in Excel. So uh, that wraps up our example on how to add Monte Carlo sim simulation to an existing Excel model. So thanks for listening and see you next time.